the chef's favourite, scallops. Hi there. Do you sto um, stock scallops, please? Putting on a romantic dinner tonight. You want the red bit on the scallop? Yeah. The lovely white bit I like. The red, what is that bit, that, that, that orangey bit? You know what? I don't know. What is that orange and white dangly bit? That's the tail. The tail? Uh, it's not a tail. I didn't want that you wag like a dog. Oh, right. Oh, God, I should, I should hope not. It'd be quite weird if your little scallops were wagging their tails. To get to the bottom of this fishy mystery, I'm getting an all-too-rare opportunity to go abroad. Oh, hi. I'm so pleased to let you out of the country. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Show me a passport for sure. I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> I own one, and I got my little flight bag and everything. I'm very excited. Oh, my God. Have you packed enough pants? Stay in touch. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Bye. And now I'm meeting Dr Turolf Magnusson. He's in charge of Norway's only commercial scallop hatchery. You must be Matt. I am. How are you? This is Turolf. Nice Hello. to meet you. So there's no one better qualified to finally answer my scallop anatomy query. This is uh, the Pactin Maximus, the king scallop. So the interesting thing is that it these animals are both male and female. Hermaphrodites? Yes, they are. <laughs> and you can see here you have the gonad. Right. And you have the red part of the gonad, which is the female part. And you have the white part, which is the male part. Scallops may be hermaphrodites, but they don't breed with themselves. The orange part of the dangly bit is female, and the white is male. Sperm is created here and released through an opening in the kidney. Later, eggs are created here and released through the same opening and out into the open water where they mix with sperm from other scallops. This evolutionary trick is to prevent inbreeding. OK, so these are the scallops that have been taken out of the ocean, bought here, and this is the, your breeding stock? Yes. So we have to give them the correct temperature, mm -hmm. we have to give them food, mm -hmm. and the food is microalgae. They need a certain uh, intensity of light. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, they will only put on growth and weight but we want them to put the energy into the gonad to have a huge gonad. You like this with a huge gonad? <laughs> I was trying not to laugh. <laughs> Dr Magnusson only wants top scallops for breeding, so huge gonads are a priority, and these conditions are perfect. Each hermaphrodite scallop will first create sperm, and then the same scallop will later release eggs. Here are all the scallops. OK. You can see they are sperming. Here's a lot of sperm. The white stuff in the water. Yeah. And here's one with egg. You see okay, the so red colour. Today we've got about uh, 150 million. But when we have the eggs here in the bucket, mm. we need to fertilise. So you take a little bit of sperm right. from three different animals. OK. Each Tuesday, Dr Turov attempts to fertilise 200 million eggs to ensure there's a continuous supply of this much-revered delicacy. A small splash. So now you're the godfather of yeah, yeah. 10 million scallops. <laughs> the eggs will now spend three weeks in this vat, growing into larvae. You've done this before. No, I haven't done this before. <laughs> and eventually, they grow into little baby scallops called spats. It's amazing to look at them individually and think that they might end up on dinner plates. <laughs> <laughs>